Oh boy, this was a long time coming. So I bought this guy back in December of 2021, before any of these guys did. And I gotta say, this is probably my favorite SH Monsters figure so far. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm a bit late at reviewing this, but hey, I could be D-Man. Anyways, the painting and sculpting of this figure is amazing. The overall design of Ultima looks imposing and menacing. Most of the body is painted in the traditional charcoal black, but it isn't too dark, which is nice as it helps out the other colors on the figure pop out a bit more. The head sculpt is especially awesome. His face looks intimidating, and the spikes on the back of it makes him more unique. And you wanna know the cool part about these spikes? They aren't that sharp surprisingly, which also goes for the spikes on the chest and arms too. Plus, the paint for them ain't that bad either, though I think they should have painted each spike separately because it looks kind of off. What I mean to say is, is that whoever painted this got their brush and just glided over these spikes. But the more I think about it, it makes a lot of sense that they didn't paint them individually, because just look how tiny these things are. One thing they nailed is the inside of the mouth. Ultima here has rows upon rows of teeth, all of which are painted and sculpted extremely well. Although I don't understand why he has so many, but still impressive nonetheless. Unfortunately, the lower teeth here are a bit dirty. Moving along down the body, the arms are kind of thin. Compared to the other Godzillas, he isn't as jacked as the previous incarnations. At least he has better arms than Shin. But his hand claws are painted nicely though. But what he does carry over are these massively thick thighs and surprisingly huge feet. The toenails themselves are also painted very well too. Also, is it just me or are the toes on this foot look like they're splayed out more than the other? As for the dorsal plates, their placement is a bit irregular, but it isn't too bad. What I mean to say is, is that for most Godzilla designs, the dorsal plates usually start out at the tip of the tail and then gradually get larger as they reach the body and then smaller again once they reach the head. And most of them usually have three rows of dorsal plates running down their backs. Ultima kind of does that except the dorsal plates just abruptly stop at the base of the neck. They're not like other Godzilla designs where they grow and then gradually slow down as they reach the head. They just grow and then they just stop before they reach the head. And they're not placed in rows of three. They're more or less jumbled on the back, which is what I meant when I said that their placement was irregular. What I do love about them are the red veins painted beautifully on the sides. It looks like they're filled with archetype. Of course, we can't forget about this stupidly long tail, which has each individual dorsal plate painted perfectly. Perfectly. Except for this spot here, it looks like it bled a lot on the tail. Now, as much as I love this figure, it isn't 100% perfect. While the eyes on my copy are painted without any mishaps, my problem with them lies with the detail itself. They look like little paint droplets compared to the original render. Now, you may be saying that it'd be hard to paint that much detail in such a small area, but keep in mind that there are other SH Mozart's figures that have smaller head sculpts that have more detailed eyes. If you're wondering why I posed him like this, that's because if his head was any lower, his eyes would be blocked by the shadow of his eyebrows. Despite that small a little nitpick, it still looks absolutely amazing. Alright, supposability. So it's really great, but I did encounter a few problems with it. So first, both the upper and lower jaw can open up wide, but not too wide. That's where we bring out this alternate head. You simply remove the old head and place the other one in. The alternate head itself looks pretty good. There's a lot more detail inside the mouth, like the teeth and these little mouth pipes. But I wish they made the original head open as wide as it should without the need of an alternate one. Heck, Shin was able to do so with no problem. In fact, because of how the mouth opens, the hinge on one side of the lower jaw got untabbed. So if you're moving the jaw too much, make sure that the sides of the jaw don't disconnect. This might also be because when the jaw is closed normally, it looks kind of crooked when viewed from the front. Moving on, the head and the neck can move up and down and side to side, as well as the chest, but can't bend that much forwards or backwards. The shoulders can move in and out, the elbows can bend, and the hands can rotate, but it's actually the wrist doing the work. They connect the elbow to the hand, which mimics the hand's articulation. The hand itself is on a ball joint. Yeah, so these things can pop off from time to time and it gets really annoying. Now, something else I should mention are the shoulders themselves. When I first moved this thing around, the shoulders gave me some resistance, which scared me because I thought that if I gave it enough force, the joint would twist and break off. Fortunately, I heated up the figure, applied some grease to it, and now it moves without issue. Moving on to the legs, the thighs can rotate, move in and out, and the other parts of the leg can all bend, and the ankle can pivot. I would be scared if they couldn't. The thighs also had a similar issue as the shoulders, but I went in there and fixed that up too. And now finally, the tail. This thing is immensely poseable. It's probably its best feature and is a lot of fun to mess with, so much so that the joints are tight enough to hold it all together. In fact, it can even support its own body weight. 
on some copies, but it does weigh itself down due to how heavy this thing is. Now while the joints are tight enough as they are, I just don't know how tight they are, except for these two at the tip of it for some reason. While it is fun to pose around, the joints connecting everything together worry me a bit because I just don't know how good their tolerance is. But what I will say is this, if you ever feel the need to do this for whatever reason, do not try to rotate each individual tail segment. Because of how tight it is, there could be a chance that you might twist the joint itself off of the figure. I was messing with it once to test out its articulation, and I felt the resistance of the joints not wanting to be twisted. And keep in mind, a majority of this figure is made up of ball joints, so they're supposed to do that. Realizing this, I stopped and hoped to never do it again. So overall, the posability is very impressive. You can do a lot with this guy, and I'm glad that I can. As for accessories, you get the previously mentioned head, and too many Jet Jaguar figures with included wedges to stand them up. And they're supposed to be in scale with Ultima, which is pretty cool. What's not cool is the fact that because of their size, you could lose them, and as for Jet Jaguar Beta, the spirits holding could break. Plus, I don't get why they're unpainted. You could say that they're too small to be painted, which is ridiculous because SH were able to paint a mini Felius for the re-release of Godzilla Earth. Also, they should have just included it with the actual SH Jet Jaguar figure. And that's it for accessories. What, were you expecting an atomic breath piece? This is SH Monster Arts we're talking here. You'd be lucky enough to get any accessories. That isn't to say that I'm not disappointed. They missed out on making an effect part for one of the coolest atomic breaths ever. Of course, there could be a chance that they could release an atomic breath version for a few extra dollars and may or may not include the piece in the first place. I'm looking at you, GMK. But I'm not gonna spend another hundred dollars just to buy another figure with a funny effect part. All right, tirade over, let's scale him out. Actually, we're gonna need something a little bit more heavy duty. As you can clearly see, this guy's a long boy. He's almost two feet long and seven inches tall. Here he is next to the Figma Sake Izioi, NECA SOS Goji, Amor Collection Velociraptor, and his other anime incarnation, Godzilla Earth. While I do have a soft spot for Earth, Ultima looks way more unique, and I prefer his design a little bit more. So should you get this thing? Absolutely, but get him cheap. I know that sounds odd or even impossible, but believe me, this guy is something you want to get your hands all over. That sounded really wrong. He's not just a good choice for a Godzilla figure, but also a really good choice for an anime figure as well. And that about wraps things up. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one, whenever that'll be. Oh, screw that!